Hey everybody, it's Chris with Xano, and today I'm going to talk to you about common roadblocks for beginners. So essentially, what are some of the most common things that we see people running into when they're first getting started building in Xano? Now, even if you're not a beginner, that doesn't mean that you won't find some value in this video, so I definitely recommend watching it all the way through. We hope this is a great resource for you to get past some of those common roadblocks that you may find. So the first one that I want to talk about today is loops. Now, one of the biggest issues that we find with loops is that when you set up a for each loop, that loop is iterating through a list of objects. And in each of those iterations, the loop is taking the item that it's working on and it's temporarily storing that inside its own variable to be updated. Now, the most common error that I see in regards to loops is not referencing the variable that the loop is using to iterate through those items. Let me show you what I mean. So in this API endpoint, it's very simple. I'm just querying all the records from my products table. Let's go ahead and run this. Let's just see what it looks like. So we have product names and we have prices. Now let's say I wanted to loop through all of these and update the price. Let's say everything is increasing by $5, okay? So let's go ahead and set up a loop for that. So I'm gonna go over here to data manipulation. This is going to be a for each loop. The list that I'm iterating through is products, and this is really where we have to pay attention because the loop is asking us, okay, what list are we iterating through? And what is the name of the variable that I'm using to store each of those as I work through them? By default, that's item. So I'm just going to leave it as that. So you can see that right here, as well as in the function stack itself. It says for each loop products as item and because this is orange we know that this is a variable so we want to update these prices so let's go to add let's add a step in our loops stack we're going to go to data manipulation and we're going to go to update variable a user might very reasonably say okay well i'm updating products so i should choose products here because that's what i want to update right so i'm going to go products.price and i'm going to keep this the same i'm going to go products.price and then I'm going to add a filter. I'm going to say I want to add five to that because we're adding $5 to each of those prices, right? So let's go ahead and save this. And now if we run this, you can see we get an error, which might be really confusing, especially to somebody who's new building in Xano. Why would I get an error? This is such a simple function stack. What's going on? Let's look at the error. It says numbers are required for mathematical operations. Where do we have a mathematical operation? That's right here in this update variable where we're updating products.price. Let's see what that looks like. So I'm going to add a step before the loop, and that's going to be a stop and debug. And what stop and debug allows me to do is it allows me to stop the function and display the output of a variable. So I just want to look at products. I want to check my work essentially. So let's click save and let's run. Okay, so I have products.price, what's going on here, right? The issue is that there is no products.price. What we actually have here is products.0.price and products.1.price and so on. Because we have an array, each of these objects inside this array is numerically indexed. So when we're trying to add a value to products.price, there is no products.price. So how do we fix this then? For this step, what we actually want to do is we want to update the item variable. So I'm going to update item.price. And I'm going to change this one down here as well to item.price. And let's use the stop and debug here. Let's take a look at item. So we just saw the output of products. So we'll change our stop and debug to show the output of item, which is the variable that our loop is using. And you can see now we have just a single object. There's no array happening here. So that means that item.price is valid. So let's go ahead and turn off our stop and debug here. And now if we run this again, our current price values in the table are 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. So if we run this again, you can see we have 15, 25, 35, 45, and 55. So again, it's just really important to make sure that when you're working inside of a loop, you are referencing the variable that the loop is using to iterate through each of those values or objects in your array. Okay, 
So that was the first. Now on to the second. The second is not having a valid data type. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to go back to this update variable step. I'm just going to clear it out, just like we're starting from scratch. So let's say I know that I want item.price, OK? I'm just going to type in item.price. Cool. Perfect. That's exactly what I want. And down here, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go item.price. I'm going to add my filter. Awesome. We did it. Let's go ahead and run. Why are we seeing this error again? What's going on? Well, this is a very common thing that we see all the time from beginners to seasoned Xano users. And that is that when you're setting up the functions inside your function stack, you really want to make sure that this little guy right here, you see where this says text? That means that this value is a text string. And that's not what we want because we're trying to reference a variable. So you always wanna make sure that you're using the dropdown and just selecting the variable. And you can see that's updated. It says var, which is short for variable. So now if we save this and we run it, you can see our prices have been updated again, just like we expect. Make sure you're paying attention to these data types. It's always a really good thing to check. Now, the third one that I have for you today is using an incorrect input type when storing an image. So let's say you have users on your front end that want to update their profile pictures or something like that. Obviously, we need an input for that, right? Because the API endpoint needs a place to take in that image data. Now, it makes perfect sense that we would go right up here and we would say, oh, I need an image. So let's choose image here, right? There's my image type, so I should be good to go. Not quite. This image is really just the metadata for the image. So that's the name, the file type, the path to that image. It's not the actual image contents. We need to use a file resource. That is the input that actually allows us to upload a file either by a URL or the raw file contents. So I'm actually going to remove this other image input. So now I have my file resource input. I can continue to build this function stack for uploading an image. Typically when this input is incorrect, you'll see an error that usually says something like value is not properly formed. So if you're seeing that and you're uploading files, make sure that you're using the file resource input. Hey everyone, it's Michael from Xano, and I have three more common roadblocks that we see people starting out in Xano run into or even not starting out in Xano. So let's go ahead and dive into them. So first one here is with the response. I'm not gonna necessarily go in order here, but let's click into this endpoint here. So right now I have nothing in here, but let's say I wanted to go ahead and add, let's say a query all records to my stuff table. And you see how the return variable says stuff one. Let's say I just want to call it stuff, or I just wanted to change the name, right? And I hit save. Well, now when I go ahead and run this, I hit an error. It says missing var entry stuff underscore one. And you can see here, uh, this happens often, maybe not always in this same flow, but we might change the name of a return variable here in our function stack, like I did here but we didn't actually go and update the response. So I would simply just need to go ahead, update the response and actually select this stuff. Make sure it says uh, var any right there and hit save. And now I'm okay to go ahead and run that and actually get my response without an error, okay? So the next one I wanna go over is deals with relationships and add-ons. So let's jump over to my database table real quick. And I just have a very simple database structure. I have a user table and we can see I just have a couple users in here and then I have stuff and I have just a name of stuff and the user it belongs to. So you'll notice Xano in the database viewer, which is what we're in, does this pretty cool thing. When you make a relationship, we can pull over related data to be displayed just to help us visualize these relationships a little bit better. And we can, of course, decide which data that we want to display here. We would just go to this main table. So I would actually go to the user table in this case, and we'd look for this autocomplete setting. But that's not what this roadblock is about. So sometimes people might think, well, okay, if I go ahead and pull these records, I should say 
C t-shirt and then C Chris and Chris at email.com and hat and with Michael at Michael at email.com under this user ID. However, this user ID is actually just the ID of that record. So we see here it's two and one and I'll go ahead and jump back to uh, our API here very quickly. So right now, if I go ahead and just run stuff, you can see, well, t-shirt is user ID two, hat is user ID one. One and two don't mean too much to us, right? But what we can do is we can use this feature called add-ons to actually uh, decorate these user IDs with the related data, just like we saw in the database view. So real quick, the way to do that is we just click on this function. We'd go to output. We'd go to add-on. There's a really great tutorial on here that tells you all about add-ons. It's very powerful. Uh, it does a lot more than what I'm about to show you. We could hit create add-on. Uh, step one, we would just, which database table do we want to add to the response? We're getting our stuff table. We want to add that user data to our response. How do we want the data returned? So there's a whole bunch of options here, single item, list, count, existence, etc. I'm going to do a single item here. I recommend watching that tutorial, reading our documentation about when and how to use which of these. Uh, how to connect the database table. So we know that my stuff table has that user ID reference. My user table has that actual user ID. So I'm just going to select that. I'll hit next. I'll hit create add-on. And voila, now we're, you can see we will get the actual data from that user table in our response. So I can hit done. We can see that's extended. I hit save. And now when I go ahead and run this, well, we get some more relevant information back, right? We see that t-shirt, okay, belongs to Chris and Chris at email.com. Pat is user one and user one is Michael and emails Michael at email.com, et cetera, et cetera. So a lot more insightful with the data when we can use add-ons uh, and add-ons can be chained onto one another. Uh, so the final roadblock I want to go over is updating list. So let's go into this endpoint. And once again, I'm just getting all my stuff here and we can see I haven't done anything to this. So it's what that original query looked like in our last example, but you'll notice something. Maybe I want to actually transform this created at timestamp to actually see the date it was created, right? It could be any kind of transformation. Maybe I want to have the name in all uppercase, right? So, okay, so the way to go and update that timestamp in Xano, right, is we could go ahead and go to data manipulation, go to update variable. I could take stuff one, dot create it at, and update it by itself. So I would just do dot notation here, stuff one, create it at, make sure that variable is selected. And I could add a filter here. And I would just want to go ahead and do format timestamp. I'm just gonna do the shortcut one, which is R. There's a whole bunch of information on how to format timestamps in our documentation and also tutorial, please check that out. So, okay, great. So this will transform those created at timestamps into actual something human readable, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and run this. So I run this and what happened? Well, this doesn't look right, right? All of a sudden I have these indexes on each of my objects. I have my created at timestamp here, which is basically zero. So this isn't the response I wanted. I wanted to transform all of these into those actual human readable timestamps. So anytime that we're updating a list, we actually need to use a for each loop in order to update each item in that list. So Chris talked about the for each loop example a little bit earlier. So let's go ahead and show you how to use that. So we'll go to loops for each loop. The list is gonna be that stuff one variable and it's gonna be as item. This could be any, we could change this to any name. We just need to make sure to use this variable. So I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it as item in this case. So I'll go ahead and just drag that into the stack. But we know from earlier we now need to change this from stuff one to item. So this needs to be item dot created at, and this also needs to be item dot created at, and voila. So now when we go ahead and run this, well, what do we get? We get all these human readable timestamps and created at. So this is once again, more insightful than a very large Unix timestamp in milliseconds.
So there you have it. Those are three more common roadblocks that I often see with people starting out in Xano. And hopefully uh, those will help you realize them and not run into them or overcome them. Thank you so much for watching this common roadblocks in Xano video. We hope you found it helpful. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them down in the comments below. You can also visit us in support chat inside Xano or on the Xano community. Be sure to like and subscribe for more Xano content, and we will see you in the next one.